33,000 years ago, Britain was a desolate frozen wasteland. Not yet an island, it was unrecognisable from the Britain of today. A featureless landscape without a tree in sight. Herds of mammoth, reindeer and wild horses followed migration routes that took them across the entire North Eurasian continent in search of new grazing grounds. Bands of humans followed in their wake, never settling in any one place, always on the move. Theirs was a world of ice and stone. Yet from these unwelcoming beginnings, humans eventually settled in Britain, beginning with communities that hugged the coasts and rivers, who then gave way to agricultural workers who transformed the landscape with their farming. The history of Britain is one most people know something about, perhaps the Tudors or the Victorians, 1066 and World War II, but how exactly they all link together and what those gaps are in between is less familiar. This is the first episode in an 11 part series exploring this story, starting with the very first people to set foot in Britain, through to the very times we live in today, this is the story of how Britain came to be, how our land and its people came to be forged over thousands of years. This is the history of Britain. Back to those mammoths. The remains of one, along with a human who had taken part in hunting it, have since been discovered in a cave in South Wales. The bodies had been buried side by side, intentionally placed there as part of a funeral ritual. Perhaps during the hunt, this individual had died and his companions had his and the mammoth's remains interred together. Those remains are 33,000 years old, but the first human remains found in Britain are 800,000 years old. They do not belong to our species of human, Homo sapiens sapien. For hundreds of thousands of years, there were several types of human on the planet at the same time. Another kind, the Neanderthals, along with the tools they created, have been found in Britain dating from 400,000 years ago. So, we Homo sapiens sapiens were one of only several species of human to have lived and walked on this land. But around 30,000 years ago, the frozen grip of the most recent ice age enveloped Britain. During that time, no humans could venture there and ice lay a kilometre thick over parts of the land. A warming of the planet 20,000 years later melted the ice and a Britain that we would more easily recognise today began to emerge. Released from the ice, a huge body of water called the Norwegian Trench swept in land and would eventually become the North Sea, but for several thousand years longer, Britain remained a peninsula of Europe. The melting ice came hand in hand with milder weather. The icy tundra that had once supported mammoths was replaced by temperate forests of birch and oak that in turn sheltered red deer. Though by the time humans could return to Britain, for whatever reason, only our species was left to do so. A fishing camp on the Isle of Col, Scotland, dating back 9,000 years, is the earliest point archaeologists believe there were permanent bands of people in Britain, that since that time through to today, humans have continuously inhabited this land. At its height, Mesolithic Britain is estimated to have a population of around 5,000 individuals. Archaeological evidence shows us that they had tools made from wood, stone and animal parts, they buried their dead and planned for the future. By 6000 BCE, as the ice continued to melt and the sea levels rise, these people became the first inhabitants of an island now cut off from mainland Europe. That means that when the first farmers arrived in Britain 2,000 years later, they arrived by boat, bringing seeds and livestock and a whole new way of life with them. Farming allows for more food than an individual needs, creating a surplus that can feed more people and support some who need not work in the fields, instead working on construction projects. Some of the greatest monuments in all prehistoric earth were built in Britain and Ireland. Stonehenge is the most famous, but there were dozens of other stone circles and elaborate tombs built at this time. These monuments have religious overtones, which hints at a society run by priests, who base their worship around cosmological events like the winter solstice. In just a few hundred years, the population of Britain jumped from a few thousand to perhaps as many as a hundred thousand. 
Farming also led to land ownership, and that led to conflict over who controlled it. Humans had shown violence towards each other before, but a surplus of food that allowed people to construct stone monuments also allowed them to develop more effective weapons of war, such as the longbow. The Battle of Crickley Hill, 3500 BCE, is the earliest known battle in Britain. It was fought, as many other battles have since, over who should control the land. This early period is called the Stone Age because the most versatile material humans had to work with, other than wood, pottery and animal parts, was stone. Metals are easier to shape and can be both lighter and stronger than stone, but are rarely found in their pure form. Instead, they're deposited in different types of rock, so humans were not aware of metal's potential. But around 6,000 years ago in the Balkans, people discovered how to extract copper ore from rock, and that knowledge eventually spread spread to Britain with the arrival of the Beaker people, so named because their remains have often been found beside beaker-like pottery. Until the Beaker people, Britain was technologically backward compared to the rest of Europe. But the large quantities of copper ore found in Ireland and tin in Cornwall propelled it to the forefront of a new age in human development. Copper is a soft metal, too easily bent out of shape or its edges dulled to be much use as a tool. But copper and tin mixed together form bronze, the hardest metal of its time. With this literally cutting edge technology, bronze produced better axe heads and the first swords, which were used as symbols of wealth. From a time of cosmological priests, status now came from owning bronze. Bronze Age Britain ushered in a new world of commerce and trade, as this newfound wealth fed a new demand for luxury goods from Europe and the Mediterranean. Settlements in Britain rapidly increased. Improved agricultural tools and a possible warming climate had improved Britain's productivity, perhaps increasing its population to half a million in only a few centuries. The Bronze Age had brought Britain a new society, more separated by class. Trade had increased and the first proper villages and neighbourhoods from which cities would one day blossom were founded. Compared to bronze, iron is an altogether better metal. It is strong enough to be hammered and rehammered into whatever shape is needed, not simply cast into a permanent one. Iron tip ploughs allowed for more effective land cultivation and so a greater yield of crops, and it accompanied a technological revolution which saw the creation of the first machines in Britain, like the rotary kern, which took away much of the back-breaking labour manually grinding grain required. An economic crisis at the end of the Bronze Age broke down the established trade networks. As a consequence, strong regional identities developed where trade was centred locally and land was more fiercely defended than ever. In the north, bows and in the south, hill forts were built from around 500 BCE. They were there to defend territory and keep others out. This was a violent time and it allowed for a new type of leader to emerge. Not a cosmological priestly one of the Neolithic period or the wealthy trading elite of the Bronze Age, but a warrior class who could lead and protect their people. And these warriors could lead their people on horseback. Of course horses had been around then, but without the horse shoes and bites and reins and saddles, they'd been too troublesome to use regularly. The Iron Age led to mounted ridden horses and so revolutionised warfare. To better show off status, there were ceremonial shields and swords. Evidence of this come from the Snettingham treasure, dated to 75 BCE, which includes a gold torque. This was an altogether new type of status symbol. This was a sign of kingship. Some of these leaders even began to make their own currency, allowing their symbols of royal authority to be spread throughout society by the exchange of coins. But despite the regional differences, a shared Celtic cultural heritage also existed. It stretched across all of Britain and Ireland and into Europe. They had a common, though very regionalised language, produced sophisticated art and held common religious beliefs. The Celtic spiritual leaders were called Druids and they exercised great power over Celtic 
Celtic culture and were in contact with each other beyond the frontiers of the individual kingdoms. Druids appeared to have been the glue that held Celtic society together. By 100 BCE, the population had risen to as many as 1 to 2 million individuals. As trade with Europe returned, so too did the violence decline and the use of hill forts dwindle. But the trade with Europe also brought Celtic Britain into contact with Rome, an expanding and powerful empire in the Mediterranean, and Rome would change Britain forever. The earliest evidence of human existence in Britain, but not our own species, comes from 800,000 years ago, the Happisberg footprints. 400,000 years later, Neanderthals were creating hand axes in Britain. The earliest remains of our species of human, the Red Lady, the one found with the mammoth remains, is 33,000 years old. 3,000 years later, Britain was enveloped by the last major ice age that lasted for the next 20,000 years with only a few periods of brief respite in between. 10,000 years ago, humans began returning to Britain. These people included the inhabitants of the Isle of Cole from 7,000 BCE or 9,000 years ago, from which point historians believe there were continuous bands of humans living in Britain. About 2,000 years later, the Great Wave completed Britain's transformation to an island. Around 4,000 BCE, the first farmers arrived by boat in Britain, kick-starting the Neolithic period, which is when Britain's landscape was transformed for farming, an ancient stone monuments were built. The earliest known battle happened 3500 BCE. The Bronze Age began around a millennium later and gave way to iron another two millennia after that. <laughs> 